Hey everyone, so this is going to be the first uh, discussion about AP-6C, and I just want to briefly go over the exam format for this exam. Now, for the most part, it's not really much different from the AP-1. Uh, it has actually been updated to better match the AP-6C1 exam. Um, so there's very few differences now, but there is still a bit of a difference that I want to discuss. So these are the, some of the things that we're going to talk about in this uh, video. Uh, the first one is the difference in the topics. Now, for the most part, it covers pretty much the exact same topics. And you might be wondering, well, what's different then? Since there's no major topic that's different, however, there are some subtopics that are a bit different. Uh, for example, APC includes three additional subtopics and concepts that are not really covered in AP1. For example, calculus. How is calculus going to be involved and anything like that? AP1 does not even touch calculus at all. Center of mass. Uh, in the AP1, we talk a little bit about center of mass and we might do a few things with it, but for the most part, center of mass is something that is uh, done uh, to calculate uh, for in the APC. So APC has an equation that you end up using to determine the center of mass. It's a pretty straightforward one. The next one is the rotational inertia and deriving that equation. Uh, in AP1, we work with rotational inertia and there is one example now where we have to calculate what the rotational inertia is of a system, but APC kind of takes it one extra step forward. Uh, so we kind of have to talk a little bit about that. But besides those three things, there's really not much that you need to be able to do. So once you cover that, and a lot of the videos that I do are actually going to be related to those three things. Once you have that, you pretty much have everything at your disposal to prepare for the APC. Uh, now, the APC exam is actually formatted exactly like the AP1. There's going to be 40 multiple choice questions, and you have about 80 minutes to complete this. This means that you have about two minutes per question, which is pretty reasonable. Uh, originally, it was actually 35 to 45 minutes, which was kind of an insane, a little bit over a minute type of thing. Uh, this is going to make the exam much more manageable for you. Uh, the free response, uh, again, just like the AP1, is going to be four questions in which you have 100 minutes to complete it. Uh, and the free response setups are actually very similar to the AP1. Now, one thing to keep in mind is uh, how these questions compare with the AP1 questions. AP1, as we discuss, are very conceptual type questions. However, the APC tends to be very direct and straightforward tends to focus more on calculation-based questions, uh, and these questions don't aren't trying to trick you at all. AP1 can be very tricky at times. APC does not do that. Now, again, as I mentioned before, the exam has been recently changed, so I can't actually uh, say this for certainty, whether this is going to uh, stick with it, but for the most part, I'm going to say that because that's how it went with the other uh, APC exams. Uh, now, some of the questions will require calculus, but not all of them. Um, for the most part, I think I, uh, I'm i going to talk about how much, uh, it's about 20%. So again, this is based on the 2012 exam. Uh, the exam that you're going to be taking is brand new. But the 2012 exam had about 20% of questions which require calculus. So it really isn't that much, and you can easily pass without it. Now, um, one thing I did want to point out, I wrote here that you only needed about 55% of the exam correct to get a 5. Again, I do want to note that this uh, may change based off of uh, the change in the exam format. Uh, I cannot guarantee that that's going to be the case, but we're going to hope that it follows with that same idea. Uh, now, what type of calculus are you going to need? Uh, for the most part, we're going to focus on a lot of the simpler stuff. Now, if you're already taking calculus, that's great. Uh, you don't need to learn any new calculus. You just need to know how the calculus is going to apply to what we are, are doing in physics and how it relates to physics. However, for those who aren't taking any calculus, these are the two things that you have to be, all well, four things that you have to be able to do. First, you have to be able to find the derivative and an integral for a polynomial function. Now, anyone taking calculus will know that this is actually an extremely easy thing to do. And it, it, it is. Um, I have a video where I talk about it and you'll see that it is a fairly straightforward uh, setup. And then the other thing is taking the derivative and integral of a trigonomic fun function like sine or cosine. Again, this is fairly straightforward once you learn it. 
Now, it is possible that you might have to do other types of calculus. You might have to take an integral of an ln function or an e function, or same thing with derivatives. However, those types of questions are very rare. And what I would say is you can just skip those, focus on the other questions, and still have a running for to get a five. So I wouldn't focus on that. I would focus m mainly on the polynomials and trig functions and knowing how to do a derivative and integral. And then, like I said, taking the, uh, learning the next step of how it applies to physics because that's actually the most important thing. A lot of people can enter into the exam understanding how to take a derivative of a polynomial function, like x squared plus 3x. However, they won't know how to do that if they're being asked, you know, what's the velocity given this force uh, equation? So this was uh, the question that a lot of people asked was, does, if, I, if I'm taking AP calculus, does that mean that I don't need to study? And the answer is no. Absolutely not. You do still have to study because, like I said, while the content may be the same with the AP one, and you may know how to use the calculus, or you may know calculus from AP calculus, you don't know how to use the calculus in these types of questions, in this type of setup. In AP calculus, you get used to either just being straight up told, here, take the derivative of this function, or being told, what's the rate of change, or some other key word that kind of hints hey, you need to take a derivative. Uh, in the APC exam, you're not going to be asked for it straightforward. You kind of have to figure out what you have to do. A perfect example was, I said it before, if I gave you an equation for force and then I asked you for velocity, you need to know whether you're taking a derivative or an integral and then what else you have to do. So what, what would you do to this equation so that you kind of do calculus to get there? Uh, if you know the calculus, you know, you'll be able to do the derivative and integral, but you won't know how to, which one to do, when to apply it, and how to apply it. Uh, and that's basically it when it comes to the APC uh, exam format. Like I said, for the most part, there's really not a whole lot of information, but it, uh, it does seem that it's formatted in the exact same way as the AP one, with again the slight addition of calculus. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, good luck and have a great day.